Hello students, welcome to the Edupedia World videos. Today we are going to start with another important topic of biology that is the muscular tissues. Now these muscular tissues are one of the most important tissues in the body because it helps us to move from one place to another. Also, the rhythmic contraction and expansion of our heart is because of the muscular tissue. So, we can define muscular tissues as a contractile tissue which contains contractile cells. Now, what does the mean contractile means? They mean the tissues or the cells which can regularly expand and contract. These contractile cells, they are held together by the connective tissues. Now, one thing to be noted here is that the matrix is absent as is present in the other cells. But here in the muscular tissue, you are not going to find any matrix. The cells are elongated. They are bit longitudinal in shape that we are going to see in the further sections. They are known as the muscle fibers. The cells are known as the muscle fibers. In the muscle fiber or the muscle cell, the plasma membrane may fuse with the basement membrane to form the sarcolemma. So in some texts you might find that the plasma membrane of the muscular tissue is also known as the sarcolemma but it is actually the fusion of the plasma membrane and the basement membrane. The sarcoplasm or the cytoplasm contains the endoplasmic reticulum that can store the calcium. So the cytoplasm of the muscular tissue it can it is also known as the sarcoplasm and it has the ability to store calcium. Now the types of muscular tissues. The muscular tissues can be of the following three types. The striated muscle fibers, the unstriated muscle fibers and the cardiac muscle fibers. Now let us first start with the striated muscle fiber. This is the typical structure of the striated muscle fiber. Here you will see there are certain alternate dark and light bands. You can see there are many nuclei. See what is the difference between a nucleus and a nuclei children? Nucleus is the singular form and nuclei is the plural form. So you can see many nuclei here and the layer surrounding this muscle is known as the sarcolemma. They are also known as the striped or voluntary muscle fibers. Striped because of the structure and voluntary because of the function. Voluntary means that these muscles are under our control. They are long, cylindrical, unbranched cells and they have alternate light and dark bands as you can see in the structure. This structure helps in the regular contraction and expansion of the muscles and the ends are blunt. This is the main distinguishing feature as we are going to see. The number of nuclei occurs peripherally, peripherally because you can see them at the corners not in the center. And these muscles, as I told you before, they are known as the voluntary muscles because they work under the control of our will. The location. Where are these muscles located? So, they will be located anywhere or any part of the body which you can move under your will. See, you can move your arms with your will so they are located in the arms you can move your legs with your will so they are located in the legs your hands feet neck face body wall and the tongue so all these parts you can move with your will and so the striated muscle fibers are located here Next comes the function of the striated muscle fibers. 
first of all it helps in the body movement it helps us to move from one place to another under our will next it helps in the ingestion ingestion is the taking in of the food it helps in the breathing and the up and down movement of the diaphragm it helps in blinking of the eye so that it protects us from the enemies or any kind of foreign particles now next comes the non striated muscle fibers these type of muscle fibers are also known as the smooth or the unstriated smooth because you cannot see the bands the dark and light bands also they are known as the involuntary muscles they are known as the involuntary because they are not under our will so they are spindle shaped as you can see this particular shape it is known as the spindle shape they are also unbranched muscle cells they occur in the bundles in the form of bundles or in the form of sheets the main distinguishing feature on the basis of the structure is that they have a centrally placed oval or spindle like nucleus and the myofibrils are absent i'm sorry myofibrils are present but they do not run parallel they run obliquely to each other they are involuntary muscles so they are not under our will now where are these muscles located they form the cushion around the eyes heart kidney blood vessels and inside the bone marrow and they help in shock absorption insulation and forming the body shape next comes the cardiac muscles now as the word cardiac comes it is related to the heart so it gives us the hint that these type of muscles they are located on the heart or on the wall of the heart they are also involuntary the heartbeat is not under our control so it is involuntary but in structure they are striated they are non fatigued muscle fibers they occur on the walls of the heart they perform rhythmic contraction and expansion regularly and they have interconnected fibers which help in the spread of impulse now whenever the heart beat spreads you are going to study in your higher classes whenever the heart beat spreads it is in the form of an impulse and it has to pass from one muscle to the other so that the impulse can pass and it is it can spread throughout the heart in the area of union intercalated discs are present so you can see the structures these are known as the intercalated disc the fatigue of these muscles do not produce lactic acid now this is a very important point children whenever your muscles get fatigued due to the anaerobic respiration they produce the lactic acid due to which you can feel that you are you are having sore muscles but this is the only muscle which does not get fatigued and the if it does not get fatigued it does not produce the lactic acid even the involuntary muscles which are not under our control they work in break but this is the muscle which works throughout the day night throughout the your life span and it does not produce the lactic acid the movement of these muscles are not under our will as we have already discussed they are involuntary they continue to contract and relax throughout the life now the functions first of all they are involuntary muscles it helps in the excitation or the passing of the impulses it does not get fatigued and it helps in the pumping of the blood throughout the body now this is a one page summary for the three types of muscles first of all let's, let us compare cells striated muscles they are long and cylindrical smooth muscles they are elongated and spindle shaped but the cardiac muscles they are small and cylindrical ends you have the blunt ends in case of striated muscles pointed ends in case of smooth muscles and broad ends in case of cardiac muscles
striations or the bands. They are present in case of striated muscles, absent in case of smooth muscles, but again present in case of cardiac muscles. Nucleus, it is multinucleated, oval in outline and it is peripherally braced. Smooth muscles, they are uninucleated and centrally placed. Cardiac muscles, uninucleated, centrally placed. Occurrence, the striated muscle fibers, they occur in the limbs, hands, body, wall and tongue, upper part of the esophagus. They occur in the smooth parts as I told you, in the blood vessels, lungs, eye, everywhere. And cardiac muscles, they occur only in the walls of the heart. Nature, they are voluntary muscles. These are involuntary and even the cardiac muscles are involuntary. Striated muscles, they get soon fatigued. Smooth muscles, rarely they get fatigued. But cardiac muscles, they do not get fatigued. Activity, they are fast and powerful. Slow but prolonged contraction and the cardiac muscles, they show the rhythmic contraction and expansion. Next class, we will study about the nervous tissues. Thank you.